felicitations to the cabinet secretaries who have assumed office today and thereafter to address the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, may we all arise in honor as we welcome His Excellency the President. I thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Let's take our seats. <clears throat> Let me take this opportunity, first and foremost, to congratulate cabinet secretaries whom I nominated and have been approved by Parliament and subsequently I appointed and today they have taken their oath of office. Congratulations ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Our nation has emerged from a period of immense struggle caused by a fundamental misunderstanding about the ways and means of accomplishing what we all agree are our shared aspirations as a people, and that is a governance that delivers security and prosperity inclusively and sustainably. It is true, and I freely admit, that due to suboptimal communication of our development agenda and a feeling of insufficient public engagement, we have lost many opportunities to walk the journey of transforming Kenya with everyone aboard, leaving some citizens unable to connect with the policies, programs, and projects that have been rolled out throughout our country. At the same time, many public officials have fallen short of constitutional standard for public officers as laid out in Article 10, Chapter 6, and Chapter 12 of the Constitution of Kenya, which makes it clear that we, as public servants and officers, are the servants of the people, and that the totality of our actions and conduct must reflect this fundamental principle and the highest standard of integrity required of public office. The people of Kenya work hard and endure tremendous difficulties in their quest to fend for themselves and create opportunities for their families. Majority of people are managing intense pressures arising from local and global economic geopolitical and climatic circumstances. Kenyans are neither afraid of struggle nor labor. We are proven serial winners of both. All they ask and all they need is a government that maintains an enabling environment for them to succeed and stays out of their way while they go out of their about their work. Kenyans demand and not only deserve but are constitutionally entitled to servant leadership. All levels of public service from the cabinet all the way to the grassroots have no choice but to live up to the truest standard of servant leadership. <laughs> Consequently, and taking this into account, we shall proceed to take unprecedented steps to accelerate the delivery of the National Economic Transformation Agenda with integrity, efficiency, transparency, and inclusivity. During the past month, I have made effort to keep my promise to engage in extensive consultations with leaders from diverse sectors, both public and private with a view to constituting a broad-based government powered by an inclusive bipartisanship that will accelerate and turbocharge the radical transformation of not just our economy, but our, also our country. More than ever, it is clear that we are fully united by a shared devotion 
to secure a prosperous Kenya that serves all of us. For this reason, I am persuaded that this moment in the life of our nation calls on us to build a strong team of rivals to give our transformation agenda the best chance of, of success and to enhance inclusivity in our national development. With the formation of this broad-based government that brings together former political rivals into one selfless patriotic team, we will unlock the potential of our country that has long been denied us by factional and sectarian competition. Our potential as a nation and the attainment of that potential have often been undermined by divisions arising from political competition. Where Kenya is today, while competition is healthy and good, there is a moment where the interest of a nation is greater than the interest of a political formation. This is such a moment, and it is the reason why I have reached out across the aisle to bring on board the knowledge, expertise, and experience of deserving Kenyans, though belonging to a different political formation. I am persuaded that a moment such as this in the history of our nation calls on patriotic citizens to forge an alliance of rivals to harness our collective political capital, knowledge, and expertise to take the strides necessary to make our country great. With profound gratitude, I commend the leaders and citizens from all walks of life who reached out, participated in, and otherwise supported the consultations, not only for the patriotism which inspired them to place Kenya before their personal, sectarian, or partisan agenda, but also for invoking the spirit of bipartisan dialogue, which has never failed to reconcile bitter rivals and unite fierce competitors in navigating critical junctures throughout the history of our nation. It is this noble spirit, this willingness to negotiate, to listen, to find common ground in the middle of conflict that drew our freedom fighters from the forest to the negotiating table at Lancaster House in London. It is also this wonderful gift that brought together the agitators of the second liberation from the streets to the inter-parties parliamentary group dialogue, and thereafter to the bombers of Kenya where our constitutional history was properly written. The ability to talk things out also enabled Kenyans to pull the nation back from the brink of an existential precipice and embark on a national accord which gave birth to the institutional dispensation that we are still working to perfect today. Here we are again today, called upon to remember the lessons of history, to live up to the demand of this moment, and set aside our partisan interests in order to show up for Kenya. The work of making our nationhood more perfect through inclusion, unity, equity, and social justice must begin by speaking with each other, listening to one another, and recognizing that every one of us wants the best for this nation. And all of us have a part to play in making Kenya great. The Farm Foundation we have built over the last two years on the basis of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda focused on job creation, development of local industrial capacity, and wealth creation. Transforming our agriculture for food security and agro-industrial acceleration. 
we focused on harnessing the potential of our micro, small, and medium enterprise to drive our economic progress. We've also endeavored to exploit the opportunities of our digital superhighway to promote technological and creative capabilities on a higher scale, creating opportunities for digital jobs, making sure that we also invest in universal health coverage to provide all citizens without discrimination with high quality health care through social health insurance and the employment of thousands of health care professionals to provide promotive, preventive, as well as curative services as I have worked with counties. The radical increase in the number of affordable and social housing units through our affordable housing strategy, which has delivered millions of direct and indirect employment opportunities for a variety of professionals, as well as invest, investment and business opportunities for enterprise and industries, has gone a long way in setting that foundation firmly. The reconstituted cabinet, therefore, will accelerate the attainment and will build on this solid foundation already built over the last two years. But additionally, we'll focus on the following critical areas. The first of these areas covers accountability and the fight against corruption. To enhance accountability and promote responsibility for the use of public resources, we shall introduce measures to levy a surcharge against any accounting officer or other public officer who has, by their action or omission, occasioned laws of public resources in accordance with Article 226.5, 201D, and 232B of the Constitution. To eliminate the ghost worker payroll fraud at all levels of government, we shall also implement a unified personal identification system for all persons working across all arms of government, including constitutional offices. Further, Cabinet shall introduce a legal and institutional framework for mandatory and continuous vetting of all public officers. The same framework will provide the repository for wealth declaration across the entire of government under one office. In addition, we shall facilitate expeditious investigation and prosecution of all offenses related to corruption and economic crimes through amendment of the relevant statutes, including the Evidence Act, the Criminal Procedures Code, and provide for their determination of all cases within six months. We believe that our war on corruption will be significantly boosted by measures to make it easier and safer for citizens and whistleblowers to come forward and report corruption and economic crimes. And for this reason, the reconstituted cabinet shall consider relevant amendments to the Witness Protection Act to enhance appropriate incentives and forward the same to Parliament. Further, as I indicated in my earlier address, I have engaged with the parliamentary leadership with a view to expediting the enactment of the Conflict of Interest Bill and expressed my determination to sign a robust, effective instrument into law in due course. I further reiterate my determination to make full and full use of the opportunities within our legal and institutional structures and systems to consult and collaborate with national justice law and order institutions with a view to promoting their efficiency and efficacy in expeditious and conclusive investigations of all active cases within a framework that we are going to agree on. As pertains to the management of public expenditure, I believe that the time has come 
for us to break new ground. That is why, beginning in the year 2025-2026 financial year, we shall adopt a zero-based budgeting system to reorient budgeting and expenditure frameworks of government. <laughs> Similarly, we shall exploit the power of information and communication technology to radically diminish opportunities for corruption, conflict of interest, and abuse of office by digitizing procurement and making it open and transparent. Likewise, we shall initiate a framework to make VAT refund processes open, transparent, and accountable because the immense savings out of this expenditure of public funds will finance investment in productive and transformative economic projects. The reconstituted cabinet will also collaborate with parliament to develop legislative measures to promote local manufacturing, value addition, and job creation by restricting the importation of those products that can be competitively produced by our domestic industrial capacity. We stand at the beginning of a new chapter of our country's governance and development. The women and men who have been appointed to serve the nation in the reconstituted cabinet have today embarked on a mission that cannot and must not fail. The people of Kenya have made their expectations known in bold terms. They have also made their intolerance for failure, inefficiency, corruption, and ineptitude equally clear. As champions of the 